So the rubber we use is a two-part silicon mixture. In order to make the rubber, we have to mix these two parts together, which introduces air bubbles into the mixture. So we use a vacuum chamber to degas it and help release these bubbles. Yep. Uh -huh. Says what we're going for. Yep. Something similar to this. These are the molds I used last year. You can kind of see it with this one. Yeah. Okay, uh, my name's Jacob Beck. I just graduated from Penn State. In the fall, I'm gonna go to Oregon State. Uh, right here at the AI, I'm working on gripping technologies. When I get to Oregon, my goal is to earn my PhD in robotics. Um, yeah, so can I show it? I'm gonna show it, okay. So I built on my previous design in a couple ways. First, we increased the number of fingers from two to four because we found that with just two fingers, when we attempted to grip things, they'd fall out the side. So with four, hopefully now we'll be able to get it from all angles and stop that from happening. Uh, in addition, I've added this texture to the bottom, which should help increase its ability to grab things on the edges. And we've also added a stronger reinforcement to the bottom, which will increase the amount of force we can apply using this. This entire structure is hollow on the inside, and each of these little tabs right here is also hollow. So when we apply pressure through the here, they're gonna expand slightly push against each other, causing them to curve down. So, using myself as our portable pressure source. And that's about the limit of how far I can get it to move with just my mouth. But we can attach this to um, high pressure CO2 and we'll get it to curl all the way around. So we'll have this off to the side attached to our pressure source. And then we're gonna have a bracket right here around the center, and that'll keep it attached to the drone. So the strength of the gripper and the amount of pressure we can put into it is mostly dependent on the type of rubber we choose to use. So the issue with this gripper is that we ran out of the stiffer rubber, and so we had to make the bottom and top half out of different hardness, and the top half is a lot softer than the bottom. So it expands a lot more under pressure and can't exert as much force compared to the stiffness of the bottom, and so the gripper isn't really able to close all the way without coming to about its failure point. The higher pressure is far more advantageous than the um, reduction we have in elongation, at least at like the step between materials I'm looking at. There comes a point as you increase the hardness where that's no longer the case. NASA specifically is interested in using this kind of technology for um, different types of sensors. So um, the sensor that we currently work with right now is uh, an ozone sensor. But there's also a lot of other applications too. For example, you could imagine um, this sort of thing being used in search and rescue applications where you can deliver a med kit or emergency food to someone who's stranded. Well, paper's gonna document my use of a soft gripper on a drone, which as far as I'm able to tell is the first time anyone's done anything like that. Do you have any idea how close to a, uh, a perfect vacuum this is? Well, the gauge says we're at 0.7 bar. You have removed 70% of the air from the chamber. Also, I think this gauge is busted, so. So it's basically saying that the atmosphere is about half as thick as it should be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if that were true, I would be quite concerned. Also, probably not alive. <laughs>